Oh, hi, um, right back again. As I said, I've been watching the um, what was happening, what is uh, with regard to the uh, the PMIs, and I can see that the uh, the first uh, set of data has come out very quickly. I'll just pull it over and a quick look at the chart. We've got the the uh, it's just the French one, the one that's the most important. Uh, no disrespect to the French, but um, it is actually the German one, which comes out at 8:30. But clearly, the market likes what uh, what it's seeing. 50 is the kind of inflection point for this uh, particular uh, release. And I've said this before, and it's explained in the, in our program as well. We look at uh, fundamental data, uh, the uh, the graphs that are produced for fundamental data in you know, the same way that you look at a, a, at a, a chart for um, for any other market. So you can see here, 50 is the, is, as I said, is this inflection. Above 50 is considered uh, a, a you know, market, economies doing well. Obviously, this is where it all fell off a cliff um, as a result of the, uh, of, of the virus and economies just shutting down, basically. And um, uh, that's the way we look. But of course, this is all you have to look at this context, context, the, the the environment that we've been living through in the last two or three months is certainly not normal by any stretch of the imagination. So there's a little bit of, um, if you like, uh, um, uh, the relief, if you like, that that number's got back back to 50. Whether that's going to be sustainable, we'll have to wait and see. And we also have to uh, wait for the, um, the, the German one, which is always considered um, uh, you know, more important. It's the most important release uh, in uh, uh, to do with the euro. With regard to what's happening on the charts, if I just have a quick look, go back down to uh, the euro dollar, and what we've seen is uh, we've let's pull up the the five minute. This is the the congestion phase that we've had leading up to the release at the volume point of control. The volume point of control is, as David has said, it is the fulcrum. The, the, the it's it's when what we mean by the fulcrum, it's that it's that zone on the chart, it's that price range on the chart where there is the, the market is considered to be in balance. In in other words, there is no firm direction one way or another. You know, there is there is uh, transactions going on, the buying and the selling, but there is nothing to drive this uh, 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 this in this case the euro dollar strongly in one direction or the other. Congestion phases uh, the. the particularly around the VPOC, you will find them building just prior to the type of new, uh, news release that we have at the moment. They also um, they also develop uh, when the this the pair, it, it's certainly in Forex, is not particularly um, uh, traded very heavily. So certain some pairs, you know, this is a 24-hour market, but the sessions also reflect the local uh, market. So at certain times of the of the trading 24-hour uh, cycle, certain currencies and certain pairs will be traded more heavily than at others. And the ones that aren't traded as heavily, they will you, know, you will have these congestion phases. And you know if you look at most charts, you will find congestion phases occur an awful lot more than uh, than than trends. But it's where trends are born. It's where trends then. Uh, you know, start and and come to a pause point, and then we combine that with well, you know, we've so we've seen that we've seen uh, the, the break higher. We know there's another item of news coming in in about six minutes. This is the burst higher. The markets at the moment is are also. Uh, um, reacting to uh, there's a lot of contradictory messages coming through. One of the messages that just which is really kind of uh, sent prices going one way or another uh, is the um, is the trade the trade agreement between China and uh, the U.S. Uh, Peter Navarro is so uh, I think he's one of the um, um, is he involved in the negotiations? I'm not entirely 100% about that, but he yeah. basically said he said it was all off. That's all been, you know, backtrack on that. No, that's not true. Trump has weighed in, say no, it's not true. It's all on. We're getting a lot of mixed messages at the moment. It's just one of those. We get this, uh, you know, you get periods of this uh, during the, uh, you know, uh, during the trading year, the trading month. You you get these mixed messages hitting the markets, and that as well is impacting the, uh, uh, the the price action. So it's, as I said, we're in this phase at the moment. It's not easy. It is tricky. But 
if you look at the price action, if you've got, uh, you look at the volume, if you've got our indicators, you look at the the levels where prices are either and you know looking to head to a pause potentially reverse pullback sometimes it's a reversal sometimes it's just a pullback just at the moment there's an awful lot more of them than we you know than has been the case up until now but that is simply reflecting this this deep uncertainty that you know yes we've you know uh, the, the, the virus seems to be dying down in certain parts of the world, but is it going to come back? You know, as I I put a link uh, to a um, uh, a newsletter that I received from one of the UK fund managers. I put the link in our in our VPA room. Um, it's for our traders who have completed our program. It's where they stay in touch with us and, um, you know, they put their questions there, they put their charts up. It, it's just a place to, to uh, you know, to, to get together, basically. And he was a, a UK fund manager, a, a, you know, one of the a, a leading fund for investors. And, you know, they are all confused. They have no idea uh, what is going to happen next. I mean, you know, trading is pretty uncertain at, uh, at the best of times, but they are just they're spinning they they say is it you know they look at the fundamental data the numbers sometimes they impact the market sometimes they don't what's driving this is is what's happening with the the, the virus what is going to happen next and as i've said before and i'll say it again we're almost we're at the stage where we know enough to know what we don't know and this is something I read uh, a few months ago, and it's it's as applicable now as as it is then. So we know lots, you know, every, there's a lot of data out there about this, but really we just don't know how this is going to uh, pan out in you know in the in the coming months, basically. And no sign on the horizon yet of a vaccine. That is what the market is waiting for. So you have to keep not only do you have to be aware of fundamental news, but you also have to keep a close eye on the developments to do with the virus. Right, getting back to the euro dollar here this is the 10 minute chart this is we've had the push higher on this chart i just have the the individual currencies let's have a look at the dollar david said the dollar has fallen quite uh, quite sharply as we can see here i'm just i just got my levels i just want to see how uh, these levels are respected or not uh, and where is it well if it's going to go higher what have I have here? I've got uh, 1312. So that's a good level that it's uh, to the upside. So as we wait for uh, the German news, if it's going to go lower, well, all the levels are pretty much, uh, they're all uh, uh, um, marked on this 10 minute chart. And where does it, to the downside? Well, it's back down to uh, the congestion volume looks quite good but it was accompanied with uh, volatility volatility in the sense that it's the price action is outside of the uh, average true range for this chart which is why the little purple uh, uh, indicator was uh, triggered we've got little dots here sometimes it appears as a little triangle and it's a fantastic indicator because it actually fires in real time so you know instinctively when that fires what is happening what is going to happen next the likelihood is there's going to be a retrace to within the spread of the candle which there was here after the first one was triggered and then you have to wait is it going to go is it going to uh, push through or is it going to congest sometimes it pushes through sometimes it congests we have it here we had another one to the downside lots of volume under that then another one was triggered it hit this level here uh, the, that retraced and in fact a little bit of congestion then we had a reversal again on on volatility but yesterday as I keep going on about yesterday there was a bit of volatility but it was more choppiness it was more this stuttering all the time which I think is actually more uh, frustrating than out and out volatility. Volatility we can kind of handle because we know what is going to happen once this indicator is triggered. Interestingly, on the uh, on the CSI, we still got the euro uh, moving higher. The dollar is moving lower, so we've got this really nice divergence here at the moment. But we've got one minute to go before the um, before the German version of the um, of this uh, of this release. The CSI, uh, the um, the Renko here again, really kind of highlights it. This is, this is what I'm trying to say. We've got this. You know, this is a trend higher. But look, you know, congestion, pullback, pullback again. Then a little bit. Then then it looks like a. You know, you would come out here if you're using this this combination of indicators because the trend monitor does actually go into a bright red. 
then it carries on higher. But as I said, it's all it's it's not easy at the moment and it's not easy for the reasons that i've outlined in uh, uh this webinar it's it's not easy because of what is going on in the broader market so i'm just going to see and wait and see what happens let me just move that up to move that down to the three minute chart and see what happens so there we are nice push higher you have to treat it almost the way that David has said with uh, the, what happens at, at the open with one of these uh, releases. Let's see if I can get an idea what the German one has come through. Yeah, it's not as it's not as not as not as good as the uh, certain the the French numbers. It's still not quite 50. I think it came in at I've got here 45.8. Uh, it's around 45, slightly better than expected but nothing like the French. Now, what's going to happen? We really have to wait and see whether this uh, looks like to be a reversal. This is just a, a, a correction. And Mark is, oh, well, it's not as, you know, maybe this is just the, what we call the knee-jerk reaction. Wait until it settles down and then, you know, carries on higher. But just just to let you know that on this particular release, there is a third element here, which actually comes in at nine o'clock for the for for the whole of the Euro uh, Euroland, and then at nine thirty we have the uh, the UK one. So it's one of these releases that you know also because it's also spread out, that's also not going to you know the you know we almost want a period of time saying well look, okay just get the releases out of the way. Can we just go back to looking at the chart and 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 not keep getting interrupted? By these, uh, uh, by these releases, but it's just the way the PMIs are uh, uh, come out on uh, at this particular time. And as I said, the upside level we're waiting for is uh, one uh, 13, 13. If we look on the hour, what did we have? It did actually, it's pierced through the R4. What, what often happens with the R4, it will go through and it will often come to retest, but it really has, you know, for it to be, to go through that, you need you need a lot of volume and you need um, uh, you need a, a break and hold above it but as I said what often happens it will go through perhaps come back and retest and then move higher which is very typical price action doesn't go in a in a straight line it goes up it's, it pauses it pulls back it you know looks like it's going to reverse and then it carries on maybe in the original uh, in, in the original direction and as David said, you look at the, you read the volume beneath the candles, and it's those pullbacks and those corrections which will, co uh, and it's the volume underneath there that will help you stay in because it will confirm. No, this is just that, and it's just a pullback. It is not a, a full bone correction from primary to primary. Uh, and the levels as well will help. That what the levels do is more than anything is you know you know you kind of say yeah that's where it's heading. I will wait to see what happens. As we can see here, it hit it once. It's hit it twice. It pulled back. Not a lot of volume under those little down counters. So we kind of know it's you know it's going to run out of steam. Then it's going to go higher. And this is. This is all this is about this uh, this business is really managing the emotions that trading triggers you know the the market makers the the manipulators the insiders they they're there they use the news they're there to they you know they they pull our emotions in one direction or another complacency euphoria fear or and and, and greed it, it's just the way we are they they know us too well and when you're looking at the chart and and ultimately as david said it's the fear of losing our money that is what you know if we ha if we have to get a not a grip on it we have to learn to manage it that's that's the best way i can describe it if you manage that that emotion which is perfectly normal none of us likes to lose money none of us likes to you know lose if you learn to manage that that will ensure that you will succeed in this market. And I think that's the only way I can describe it. David, can I pass back to you, Lauren? Is that okay? Yeah.